Hey, what's up guys, it's Farmer Jack. We're in our back kitchen garden and we're looking for pests. So this time of year, the pests really aren't that much of an issue, honestly, because it's all cooled down. It's not so humid. They like to live in that tropical, you know, environment, a lot of these pests. But the caterpillars are an issue. And we just found some. Tali and I were just pruning this tomato to make this garden look pretty for this video. And funny enough, we're finding pests just doing what we're doing, you know, for this pest video. So let's get into it. This is a hornworm. You can see it has a horn, so use gloves and some of these will sting you. Look, you pull it right off the plant. A bird might come in here and swoop and eat it, but maybe not. And I wanna have cherry tomatoes. So look, this is the new growth at the end of the tomato. And it will eat this whole thing from the top. So it'll, stunt, it'll stop the growth, the natural growth of the tomato. So good thing we found it today. That brings an amazing point. Ah! <laughs> Observation is half of garden. We'll see these caterpillars because it will be out here and we'll be present and we'll be aware. And it takes that. You can't really, it's, it's, so, it's so fun. It's like life, you know, it will, your garden will give you whatever you put into it. So you gotta be out here looking. And then part of that is the, you know, companion planting, good soil, healthy soil helps a lot make strong plants, but if the pests are eating your plants, I've found, doesn't that mean it's, it's healthy? There's no poisons on it or chemicals eating your plants, you know? We're organic gardening here, so that means that there's no chemicals on these crops. So that's a good thing. We want that to be the case, but that comes with pests. It's just part of it because it's the habitat, it's the environment we all live in. We're not corrupting it with our chemicals. Therefore, they're gonna be pests. So it's a forever learning experience uh, with, with the pests and seeing which ones are an issue for you in the garden and which ones you gotta look out for. And today we found caterpillars. Yeah, like right here, we have some caterpillars that are gonna turn to beautiful butterflies. And it's so funny, in our herb gardens, this happens all the time. The caterpillars will wreck the dill or the parsley. It loves the Italian parsley. And I love the Italian parsley. So a lot of these, it's good to know what likes what so you could attract them in kind of their areas of the farm and and uh, you know, there's enough for everyone. We've conditioned ourselves that bugs are bad, call the bug guy, all bugs are bad. But what if that's not true, you know? <laughs> so it's just asking ourselves, okay, what's actually going on? And learning it so we could optimize it. Some practical things to look for when it comes to caterpillars. Um, there's these holes in the, in the garden, that's a good sign when you see holes in the leaves, this is bok choy. But you'll also find them in the center, they're going after that new growth. Everyone likes that new growth. But you could find them under the leaves a lot of the time, hiding from the sun. And you go in there and you kind of crumple up that leaf or, you know, use it. It's good because I'm out here and looking and seeing he's gone. Maybe a bird got him or whatever. But anyways, he's gone and it's not like an infestation. So I'm not going to freak out and replace the plant. It looks so great. Um, but it but without enough balance and a lot of stuff going on, they could keep going and eat all the plants. So you wanna get them before there's an army of them kind of going plant to plant. Cool guys, so we're over here by our sapodilla tree. This is one of our fruit trees and it has some disease going on. So I wanted to show you um, what that looks like. It gets scale, it had scale and I kind of dealt with that. And that's this little like bumpy thing on the trunk and um, it'll eat, you know, and like suffocate the branches. Uh, there's this uh, like sooty mold that's not really an issue, but it doesn't look pretty. So you just wipe that down to let sun in there. And we get all sorts of these like these, there's like these fuzzy, um, they look like mealy bugs over on that other one, but they're being farmed by the ants right now. And I just don't think the ants are going quick enough. Like there's some really bad ones. So I'm just gonna wipe that off so they don't take over, you know? Some people get nervous, they wanna spray, they wanna chemically do it, but this is kind of an easy approach, let me show you. So everyone's got some sort of rubbing alcohol and like a cloth, this is so easy. So you dilute it with water, I'm just using this wet rag. You basically just come in here and you wipe it down. And the ants would eventually get them, like they're definitely the be beneficial insect in this case. Sometimes ants are no good. They'll burrow in the trees and stuff. But they were killing these bad guys. It's really labor intensive. That's why people just want to douse all their trees. 
Um, and you can with like neem oil and all sorts of stuff, but like I feel like this is more effective. Yeah, my buddy Thomas, who's really into fruit trees, he pays attention to all this stuff and a little bit more than I do when it comes to fruit trees. Thomas got a lemon drop mango steam the same time I did from the same source and he noticed it had some stuff going on like this and just not in the best shape. And he is doing what I'm doing on the mango steam and he has his fruiting in his yard nice and big. And uh, I think mine withered away, you know, cause I didn't take the steps. So this is good to do like the first year or so in of the plant's life while it's really uh, susceptible. Also pruning, like an opening it up is important. Kind of like I was doing on the tomatoes. Just, you know, once or twice a year, just not when it's kind of about to flower. But also compost tea is a great solution. That kind of brings in some of the good microbes and, uh, and just kind of douses it with, with that and kind of helps with fungus outbreaks and stuff like that. So in, <laughs> so in conclusion, it's hard to go over every pest that can come up in the garden slash food forest. However, it's good to know what to look for and to know um, how to handle those situations. So we'll see you next time and I hope you got something out of this video.